Hey everyone, and welcome back to another podcast on Photography Made Easy. And again, our number one goal here is for you to learn in 10 minutes or less, and that's what these are designed to do. And again, I'm going to welcome my good buddy, Joe Marshall. How's it going? Hey, Scott. Uh, very good. Um, I just want to make it one point that we're spitting out these podcasts and we're giving our personal uh, opinions based on experiences and how we use things. Your mileage may vary. So we want you to listen, enjoy these, and you'll learn something with that. Yeah, that's a great point. Again, we're just giving you our opinions, our experience, our trial and errors, and hopefully you can learn something from it and choose what you want to learn you know, from it and choose what you don't want to learn. You know, We did a podcast recently on a JPEG and a RAW, and some people love the RAW thing. I personally don't. Joe, I know you personally don't. I see the advantages to it, but it doesn't mean that I want to go that route right now. Um, but there's a lot of people that are using it, so you know what? Knock yourself out, and if it works for you, it works for you. So again, we got to keep this under 10 minutes because we want to keep everybody moving, right? So Joe, I think this question uh, came in more towards your side of it because you're the you're the guy that's got all the techie stuff um, and I think it was about sRGB so why don't you just dive right into that question I think you received it from Rodney wanted to know what you shoot and what I shoot and uh, what you know what does the lab prefer us to shoot in all right yeah well that's what we got as a question is uh, what do we set our camera at RGB or sRGB and if you don't know there's two versions in there for the color flow uh, and there's a setting in the camera basically what happens is you find out the lab you're going to do now we're not talking about printing yourself right now the lab now there are Kodak machines based in the uh, New York area around uh, there's Noritsu which is uh, a model that some labs use there's a Fujitsu and Fuji uh, Pioneer printers I think uh, Sam's Club places like that use them those other than the Kodak, the Kodak is RGB, the others are sRGB. So you don't want your camera having it set for one way and sending it to a lab who can't do the right color. Your picture will be off and you'll say why, or, and the lab will say why we can't get it. They'll fi finally figure out that it was sent to them in a uh, wrong format. But basically, if you like the lab you're using, find out, just ask them, what are your pictures uh, based off of? and then you set that in your camera. So even though there's a theoretical preference and you'll see it and it's just textbook theoretical that RGB is the best gamut for colors, it doesn't mean that's what you use if your lab doesn't. Okay, And it doesn't mean go find another lab because there are some labs that you want the rest of your life. They do so much customer service and they, the, even the little proof sizes are color adjusted, whatever. So you have a lab, and that's why you like it, and go to it. So you just find out and shoot for them. Yeah, and that's a great point. I and you know I don't even really think we need to discuss any more about that because it's pretty pretty much you know contact your lab, you know see what they're you know what they're printing in what color you know color mode, and then set your camera to that. It's pretty basic. So that's really all you need to know. But the big thing here is is if you don't do that and they're printing the opposite of what you're doing, your pictures are going to come out a little goofy. And then when they do that, you're going to be wondering why, and they might not figure it out for a little while, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're pulling your hair out wondering, you know, how am I going to fix this, and why are my pictures looking so bad, my camera's bad, whatever. So with that being said, let's go into another quick question that came in, and basically saying, what do you print? You know, do you print at home with an inkjet, with a laser jet, you know, uh, do you use a lab? What's the best, uh, you know, printer to use? Um, my take in on this, I'm going to be real short on this, um, but I'm going to get right to the point. My take in is on this is I would rather pay a lab to print my my proofs, my portraits, you know, my the stuff I'm giving out to my customers because that's my quality. The difference is this, you know. You can do it at home, and I know there's people that do do it, and they get really good results. But you're, it's kind of like you have a whole day maybe of printing stuff. I'd rather have a whole day of shooting and then letting the professionals print my work, especially if you have a relationship with that professional lab that's going to give you those professional results. And they know your standard because you've trained them, okay, because over the years or over the months – that you're working with them, you're you're constantly telling them what you like and what you don't like. That's very important to have a good relationship with the, with your lab. So, my thing is, I don't want to monkey around with it. You know, I use my inkjet for printing out flyers, for, you know, for printing out you know little promo pieces and stuff like that. 
if you're at a function where you want to do on-demand printing, then yes, you're going to have to come into an inkjet or a laser jet. So that's my take in on it. Leave it to the professionals. Have a lab. Print your stuff. Joe? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's some good Epson printers, and there's probably good Canons. Uh, the 1900 series from Epson, the 2880 printer. Um, they're pricier, but you're using up to eight inks now. It used to be four and six, and now they're up to eight. Some of them are using an orange ink. Some of them are using three different kinds of black when you want to do black and white ink. Uh, those are great when you have a small order. If you just want to do a couple of pictures and knock them out or do... Like Scott said, do a flyer or you want to do something for an exhibition and put it up in a bank or a, a pet store or something. Yeah, you might want to do it that way yourself and you can probably use different size paper. They have 13 by 19, which you might not get at a lab. Uh, you can do things like that. But basically, it's time consuming and I don't know what happens when the ink starts to give you lines on the paper. You have to throw that out or if you lose one of the cartridge colors in the middle of your uh, assignment. Um, if you don't use a printer all the time, the tiny little heads will clog and you, I, I, have never had a printer work more than a year because I don't print that much and I usually end up buying the next model because that head just clogged and there's nothing you can do. It's not worth, um, you know, paying to get it fixed. Which is a, is a great point, Joe, because, you know, that's happened to me before. You know, you go on vacation, I come back to print out, you know, a work order or print out, you know, another flyer and, you know, I get lines in it. Then I got to clean it out. And then once you clean it out, then the one head is plugged. So then you got to try to clean that out. By the time you do that, every time you clean it, your ink is being used up. So it ends up costing you more money and it all, it's also more time consuming. So I would just leave that to the professionals. But the other thing we got to talk about is the consistency, Joe. I mean, let's face it. You know, if you don't print everything off of the same printer, it's not going to look the same. So let's say you print out everything because all you can do is print up to an 11 by 14 and then they want a 16 by 20. Well, that lab oh, so you're so you're splitting your order. So you may be go using a lab for the big ones and you think you can save money by doing the wallets and the proofs. Absolutely. And then you know what's going to happen. The customer is going to call you back and say, hey, what's going on here? Well, this doesn't match this. So I would much rather just have it all done at the same place. That's just my personal preference. So that's it, guys. This is going to wrap up this lesson. We can go ahead and beat this to death. But let me just say that, you know, you can go out and print your own stuff. You can get really good results. But again, I'd rather be shooting than printing my own stuff. So I'm going to leave you on that note. I hope you guys took a lot out of this one here. Go ahead. Listen to it again if you have to. Pick out what you can apply to your business and go ahead and take some action. We'll talk to you later. Hey.